Republican strategist and CBS News contributor Frank Luntz is also on Capitol Hill. Good morning, Frank. Good to have you. Good morning. Thank you. So tell me what you think the Republicans are about in terms of reining in this ethics committee. What I don't understand is why the first thing they would do would in any way undermine the perception of accountability, which is the number one value that the American people want to see in Congress. They should be talking about health care. They should be talking about taxes. Having a discussion that we are right now on ethics is not good for anybody. The reason why they're doing it is the poison that exists here. The feeling that members of Congress can be accused of absolutely anything and they don't have due process. So what does it but say? Frank, what does it say about the power of the speaker? I don't think this is an issue of Paul Ryan versus the conference. I think it's an issue of how best to pursue an agenda that the public expects you to pursue and not get sidetracked with issues such as this. So you've spoken with members, party, uh, Frank, with members of both parties. What's the mood on both sides? It's, it's serious questioning. No one knows what to do on the Republican side. Are they going to come together and complete the agenda that they ran on? They made an awful lot of promises that they have to deliver. And on the Democratic side, the question is whether to fight, compromise, or do some of both. Turning to Democrats, what are they going to do in terms of trying to either approve or stop nominees of the president-elect? On the Senate side, and I've had a number, number of conversations in the last 24 hours, you have about 10 Democrats that are willing to work with President Trump, not just nominees, but on other issues. But they're nervous that they're going to be attacked by the base, that they're going to be attacked by Bernie Sanders and his supporters. So if I were advising them, I would tell them to pick one or two of these Trump nominees to focus on and don't just simply oppose because the American people won't appreciate it. When you're elected president, you get to have your cabinet, but if there are one or two people who aren't qualified or capable or have conflicts of interest, hold them accountable, not the entire cabinet uh, nominees. Is, Is, that li Go ahead. Go ahead. Is that likely to be Rex Tillerson? Um, I've heard him. Um, I've heard others. Unions want to take on the Secretary of Labor nominee. Environmentalists want to take on the EPA nominee. Different people want to take on different individuals. In the end, Charlie, I predict that all of them, all of them will pass. But I think that you're going to see three or four that are going to have a very rough time over the next four to six weeks. Frank, let's talk about Obamacare for just a second, because, as you know, the president-elect has promised to repeal Obamacare. Yet data this morning from The Wall Street Journal it indicates that a lot of people who supported Donald Trump also depend on Obamacare. Doesn't that create problems for him? Well, the challenge here, and this is the number one issue where the Republicans voted for Donald Trump to, to repeal it, and independents want parts of it to remain. And the two parts that matter most are children being able to stay on their parents' plan until they're 26 and pre-existing uh, pre conditions. The public wants those two components. So the question is, if you repeal it but keep those two, have you done what conservative Republicans want you to do by changing the health care law? Okay, Frank Luntz, new year, new beard. Is this a new you? <laughs> uh, and, and, and for Nora, I even wore a very plain, boring jacket. Okay. I'm trying, guys. I don't want boring. I just want matching. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Thank Frank. You. Thank Great you. to see you. You got it. <laughs>